So this morning, I believe the Lord has a word for each and every one of us. And therefore, the title of my message this morning is The Anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure from time to time, you heard of we pastors or other speakers talking about the anointing. Asking you to seek the Lord for His anointing. But the big question is, what is the anointing? What is the anointing? And I pray this morning as we look into the Word of the Lord, that you begin to come to a fresh revelation of the anointing of the Lord and that we need God's anointing upon our lives. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Praise you, O God. Father, we come before your awesome presence. What a joy to be found in your house, O God. And Father, right now, we open our hearts, O God, to listen to you, O the Lord. And Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to us in a very special way. Lord, you know the hearts of your people. You know the needs of your people. And I pray, O God, you minister to your people this morning in a very special way. Let there be a fresh word, a rhema word, O God to your people. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. The anointing. What is the anointing? The word anoint means to rub on or to smear. To rub on or to smear. Just like we rub on ourselves, our bodies, so the lotion, so the ointment, all right? And whatever we apply on our body, there is the desired effect, the desired outcome. In the same principle, the anointing that is upon us, that means it is the touch of the Lord or the presence of the Holy Spirit being rubbed on us or smeared upon us that we experience the touch and the, the presence of the Holy Spirit in a very special way. In the Scripture, from time to time, we read about, you know, God, people, God's people be anointed as they embark on a new position or they embark on a new project. For example, as you look into the Bible, we see the anointing upon Aaron, the high priest, the anointing of the Lord upon Aaron to function effectively as, an, as a high priest. And also the anointing upon Saul as the first king of Israel, empowering him to, to lead the nation of Israel. Of course, we see the anointing upon David also as the future king. And later we will look at the life of David. And of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, He was anointed as He embarked on His early ministry. They went about the anointing upon the apostles. The apostles, each and every one of them, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, also upon believers, the anointing upon believers for service and spiritual gifts. That's why you see throughout the Bible, there is that important moment when God's people receive the anointing of the Lord as they embark on a new mission, as they step into a new office. Church, let me say this. The anointing of the Lord is for people not just in the ministry. It's also for people in the marketplace. That you and I as believers of the Lord, we experience the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not God's desire that we seek to live life by our own human strength, by our own human wisdom, by our human power. But God wants to anoint us, that we move forward you know, and function effectively under the power, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's why you and I, we need God's anointing upon our lives. Because as the anointing rests upon us, you know, that's where God's power rests upon us and the anointing of the Lord flows through us and we become God's vessel used by the Lord. That's why there are two important words, purpose and power. Purpose and power. The anointing of the Lord upon us is to fulfill 
God's divine purpose. Because God wants to use you and me to fulfill His divine and the purposes. And of course, the, the other word is power. We can only fulfill God's purpose through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's so why we as a Pentecostal church, we emphasize so much on the Holy Spirit because we need you know, the touch of the Holy Spirit upon our lives to fulfill His purpose under the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let, let me share with you a personal uh, experience. I mean, in my Christian journey, I've experienced the Lord's touch, the Lord's presence, the Lord's anointing in different ways, in different forms. You know, not, not too long ago, uh, my wife and I, we were invited to attend uh, a, a birthday party of uh, a, a mutual friend. We don't really know this friend, but through another believer, we got to know them. But this friend, he's a pre-believer. He celebrated his 60th birthday. And he invited my wife and I to attend his birthday party. Initially, I was reluctant to go because we don't actually know him that well. But because he's a pre-Christian, I said, Lord, it's an opportunity for me to you know, connect with him. So we went that evening and we went to his house and they were at the door, you know, step, welcoming other people. So my wife and I, we walked towards him and I shook his hand and I wished him blessed birthday. And also I shook the, the hand of his wife and I said, you know, what a great joy to be with you here this evening. And that's it. And we stayed only for about half an hour and then we went off. The next day, the wife of this uh, pre-Christian, she's also a pre-Christian, she called our mutual friend. And she said to my, our mutual friend, she said, last night when your pastor came you know, to us and when he shook my hand, I felt a warmth flowing through my body. I felt a warmth flowing through my body. And, and she begins, begins to wonder, what was that? And our mutual friend who's a believer told her, well, lightly, there's the touch of God upon your life. And because of that experience, the touch of the Lord, she was open to the gospel and she began to search and seek you know, after Christ. And to cut a long story short, she came to church one Sunday and she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And just last year, she got baptized in water. And now the husband, you know, before has been coming to church from time to time. She experienced the touch, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know, since that day, I have now washed my hands. I wish, I wish that every time when I shake somebody's hand, the anointing of the Lord will just flow through me and touch someone in a very special way. See, church, that is the anointing to fulfill a purpose under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why you and I, we need the anointing of the Lord upon our lives. Whether you're just a young believer or been a believer for many years in the ministry, in the marketplace, we need God's anointing. And this morning, I want to look with you into the life of David. And begin to see how the anointing you know, makes a difference in his life. The anointing of the Lord making a great difference in the life of David. Less than the first Samuel chapter 16, verses 12 and 13. Here the Bible says, So he sent for him, and him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Notice the phrase, 
from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. David experienced the anointing of the Lord upon his life and experienced the empowerment of God upon his life. And David, in a really under the anointing, began to fulfill God's purpose in a very powerful way. As I mentioned earlier, you know, the anointing of the Lord makes a great difference in the life of David. What was the effect? There are four important words. The first word is courage. Because of the anointing of the Lord upon his life, David has such courage. Or he has such boldness. Look at verse 32. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Your servant will go and fight him. You remember the story about Goliath? Goliath, you know, every day he will come out from his camp and he will begin to, you know, kind of uh, say to the Israelite soldiers, come and fight me. Anyone, come and fight me. But none on Israel's side dare to fight Goliath because Goliath, he was a giant. But here David said to Saul, let me go and fight Goliath. Just remember, David was just a young shepherd boy. Just a young man. But he has such courage, such boldness. The question is, where did he get such courage? Church, that is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that gave him that boldness, the courage to rise up for such a time as this to face the giant called Goliath. By nature, many of us, we tend to be more timid, all right? And when we are asked to embark on anything that requires you know, certain commitments, certain faith, and we will say, oh, not me. You know, we try to, you know, kind of see them away and try not to uh, volunteer ourselves because deep inside us, we begin to realize that maybe I cannot do it. I'm so weak. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not mature enough. I'm not, you know, this and that. We give ourselves a lot of excuses. But church, and that's where we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because by our own human strength, we will not be able to accomplish you know, what the Lord wants us to do. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, that's where we are empowered to do what God wants us to do. The promise, oftentimes we say no to what God wants us to do, and therefore we dare not step out in faith, and because we dare not, and that's where we miss what God has for us. We miss what God has for us because God wants to experience Him in our walk and in our life. And from time to time, it takes courage. It takes boldness, step out in faith and just to trust the Lord to face the situation, to face the giant, to embark on a new direction. Courage. That means a sense of confidence in the Lord. And that's what the anointing will do to your life and my life. The courage to face our situation. The second word is the word conviction. Conviction. You see, in verse 45, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you. In the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Wow. Such, you know, conviction. And then in verse 46, This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. 
the, this very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the, and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. What a great conviction. What is this conviction? A conviction to know that the Lord is with him. A conviction to know that the Lord will fight for him. The conviction to know that the Lord will go before him. Such great conviction. And we all need to have such great conviction to know that the Lord, He is with us and He will fight for us and He goes before us. And then we are able to trust in Him and put our faith in the Lord. Here David say, you know, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Wow. This morning we sang songs about the name of our God. And David is a man who knows and understands the power of God's name. And that's why he said, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. That conviction that the Lord is with him. Church, from time to time, we all face our own Goliath, right? Goliath in your family, maybe. A Goliath at your workplace, a Goliath, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, in your situation. We all have our own Goliaths. But the question is, how do we face our Goliaths? Do we face our Goliaths with fear? Sometimes fear can cripple our hearts. But here, like David, we learn to face our Goliaths in the name of the Lord, because we know our God. We know that He is with us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we know that the battle belongs to the Lord, that the Lord will fight for us. And therefore, with that kind of conviction, we're able to face every Goliath with a great sense of faith in the Lord, that He will fight for us. And then we begin to look at Goliaths differently. I remember when I was a senior pastor of Grace Assembly, when we embarked on the building project, and the cost was uh, $60 million. I can tell you, you know, I just I came before the Lord and said, God, that is a lot of money. And I said, Lord, I'm not a fundraiser, I am a pastor. And I said, Lord, you know, to raise that kind of money, it is just, you know, beyond, you know, beyond me in, in that sense. But I've learned to surrender. I've learned to commit to the Lord. And I said, Lord, this building project, it is your project. It is not my project. And Lord, you are the provider of this church. And Lord, that you will provide and you will perform great miracles and we will experience your provision in a very special way. So I learned to, to surrender the project to the Lord and I know the Lord is with us and he will do great things for his glory. And some of you heard about the story how the Lord provided every dollar. We move into the building, new building project debt free because God, He was with us. And that was a wonderful experience for me personally to, to see how the Lord, you know, miraculously just, uh, you know, help us to, to raise every dollar for the project. That's why we need such conviction as we face our Goliaths. Not with fear, but with faith. The first word, as I mentioned, was courage. The second word, conviction. Then the third word is conquest. Conquest. In verse 50, So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Wow. What a great victory, isn't it? God granted David 
a victory beyond his human ability, beyond his own human power. He experienced the mighty hand of God. Church, let me say this to you. God wants you to experience his victory. Because the Bible says we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are to experience God's mighty hand as we go through you know, this journey of life. If I were to say this, God wants you to be successful in what you are doing. Success in your work, success in your family, success in your studies, success in your business, success in your project. God wants you to experience His mighty hand upon your life. That you will experience you know, great conquest. Not because of your own human ability, but because of the anointing and the power of the Lord upon your life. And I can say by the grace of God in my ministry thus far, God has been gracious in every uh, challenging season and experienced His favor, experienced His strength, experienced His wisdom, in short, experienced the anointing. As a result, experienced, you know, uh, victories. And as a result, I'm able to, to rise up and testify of the goodness and the greatness of my God. In the same way for you also. God wants to experience His mighty hand upon your life so you experience His victory so that you have a testament to share of the goodness of the Lord and the greatness of the Lord. That in your own situation, you are able to say, God is with me and God help me you know, through this whole situation and God you know, really empower me in a very special way. So I pray that God, you know, will just anoint you just like David, that you experience, you know, God's victory in your life. What is the one important uh, challenging situation you're facing right now that you need God's touch and God's anointing and God's breakthrough upon your life, upon your situation? That's why I said earlier, we need the Lord's anointing. And finally, the fourth word, is the word champion. In First Samuel chapter 18, verse 5, whatever Saul sent him to do, David did it so successfully that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Wow, you see here, God raised David up. God exalted him, God promoted him, and he became a champion for the glory of the Lord. The Bible says, you know, Goliath is the champion at one point, but actually the real champion now is David, the shepherd boy. From a shepherd boy, from a nobody in one sense, to become a somebody. Because God raised him up because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon his life. Church, I want you to know this. Promotion comes from above. Any form of elevation in your life comes from the mighty hand of God. We want to experience, you know, progress in our lives. But that's where we, you know, surrender our lives to the Lord and allow God in His own way to raise us up. David experienced such great promotion in his life. That's why the Bible says promotion comes from above. Promotion comes from above. And I pray in your own life, that you experience God's promotion, that in one sense you become a champion at where you are when people see your life, they see the hand of God upon your life and they see the works of God upon your life. And that's where you're able to testify of the greatness of your God in your life and situation. These are four important Things or areas that David experienced because of the anointing. What a great effect. What a great outcome. You know, courage, conviction, conquest, and champion. 
But now let me say this. We all desire the anointing of the Lord. We all want to experience the anointing of God upon our life because we want to experience God. But there are ingredients for an anointed life that we must take note. And let me just briefly share with you five important ingredients of an anointed life. Five important ingredients. The first is connection. Connection. In other words, it's about your connection with the source of your life. And the question is, who is the source of your life? And I pray that the Lord is always the source of your life. And you remain connected in a closely to the Lord. Because the connection, you know, brings about that, 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 that great, you know, touch of the Lord upon your life, that you'll be refreshed, you'll be recharged because of that connection. And always remember that God is the source of our strength. And therefore, you and I must always be connected to the Lord. And if I, I may ask you a question this morning, how is your connection with God? Is it a strong connection? Are you daily being refreshed and recharged in the presence of the Lord Almighty? You see, every day we need to charge our mobile phone, right? So the question also is, are we being charged by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis? And that has to do with our connection. The second word is covetous. Covetous can be a good word when we begin to covet after God, when we begin to seek after God, that there's a longing, there's a desire in our hearts for more of the Lord, for more of His touch, for more of His empowerment. So I pray that you and I, we have that great sense of, you know, uh, seeking after God, coveting after God, never satisfied, always desiring more and more of the touch of the Lord. That's why Paul says that I may know him. He also said, I've not arrived yet, you know, but I'm seeking, I'm, I'm going after. May we have such you know, great desire for more of God. That's why David, he talks about as the deer pants after the water, so my soul longs after you. They kind of thirst, they kind of hunger for more of God. So I pray that we will have such, you know, a hunger in us for the Lord. The third word is the word consistent or consistency. You see, the Bible always describes our Christian life as a walk with the Lord. We are to walk with the Lord, walk with the Lord daily, walk with God closely. That speaks of consistency because Christianity is about a daily walk. It's about our daily walk. Let me say that today. Say that again. You know, our Christianity is not about once a week we come to church or just twice a day of the way. But Christianity is about our daily consistent walking with God. That every morning we wake up, we wake up the great consciousness of the God of our lives. And every morning we look to the Lord. And every morning before we go to work, we say, God, today you and I, we are in partnership. And Lord, today I need your anointing. Consistency in your walk with the Lord. And the fourth word is the word commitment. That means you're committed to the ways of God, committed to walk in obedience to, to what the Lord is saying to you. Be committed in your Christian life to the Lord. And finally, the fifth word is the word consecration. It's about giving your heart, your life to the Lord, to live a life fully consecrated to the Lord. These are five important ingredients for an anointed life. And the more you walk closely with the Lord, the more you seek after the Lord, the more you walk in consistency with the Lord, the more you walk in His ways and surrender your life to the Lord, the more you experience the anointing and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. 
That's why every day we need a fresh touch. We need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Some of you have been to the camp, and I'm sure at the camp you are being recharged and revived. But sometimes when we are not consistent in our walk, we begin to allow you know, the business of life to, to creep into us. And then after one month of the camp, you know, we, need, we find that the fire is no longer there. That's why it is about a daily walk, a daily you know, touch from above upon our lives. So church is about you know, your heart and my heart desiring for more of the touch of God upon our lives. Let me just close with this story. Maybe you heard of this uh, story before. One day, a father took his five-year-old son out for a walk in the park. As they were walking in the park, the son asked the father, Father, how big is God? Father, what is the size of God? The father pondered for a moment, and at that very point, an aircraft flew over them. And the father asked the son, Son, look up to the sky. And the father asked the son, How big is the aircraft? And the son said, Dad, it is so small. Then the father drove the son to Changi Airport, parked the car at the Terminal 3, and then brought the son and walked as close as they can to where the aircraft had been parked. And looking through the glass into the son, could see the aircraft just in front of him. And the father asked the son, Son, how big is the aircraft? And the son said, Dad, it is so big. It is so big. What's the point of this story? The point is about closeness. The point is about intimacy. The closer you are to God, the deeper the intimacy you have with God, that's where you have a greater perspective and revelation of the God that you worship, the God that you serve. And the closer you are to God, that's where you begin to experience the presence of the Lord in a greater measure in your life. But when you are far away from God, and that's where you lack the intimacy with God, you lack the connection with God. And that's when you face the giants in your life, you're not able to, to see the greatness of your God. You can only see the bigness of your problem. And that's where you and I, we can be overwhelmed by the giants of our lives. That's where fear can grip our heart because our eyes were not on the Lord. Our eyes were on our situations. Church, it's about you and I drawing close to God on a daily basis. And that's where we begin to have a greater revelation and perspective of the God that we worship. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Christian life is not a, a ritual. It's not going through certain programs. It's not just participating in certain activities. Our Christian life is about our relationship with the Lord. It's about our walk with God. It's about our hearts desiring more of God. And that's where we experience the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So I pray that you will begin to have a greater thirst and hunger for the touch of God upon your life, that you will seek God for His anointing. And this morning, I will challenge you, be a God chaser in your life. Chase after God and desire to experience more of God in your life. So this morning, as you come to a close, I pray that your heart be open to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and you will begin to say, Lord, I need your touch. Lord, I need your anointing. I need a fresh, oh God. Lord, empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let's just bow our hearts before the Lord and come before his awesome presence this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Praise you, praise you, O God. Father, we come before your awesome presence. And Lord, we need you. We need your touch. We need your anointing, O God. As we embark on this journey of life and face the challenges and the Goliaths in our lives, O God. And Father, we need you more than ever before. So Lord, I pray that you just open our hearts, O God, that we have a greater desire for you and for more of you in a very special way. This morning, I'd like to pray for some of you here this morning. Especially those of you who are at this point, you have just maybe embarked on a new project or embarked on a new direction or just taking a new responsibility. If that's you, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for God's anointing to rest upon your life, that you experience God's in the mighty hand, His empowerment, that God will grant you favor, wisdom, and strength in your direction in your life, that you will experience God's victory and God's success. I want to pray for those of you who are in such a, a situation at this point. If you are, you know, at this point, as I mentioned earlier, either started a new project, a new work, a new direction, or take a new response with it, you say, yes, Pastor Kevin, pray for me. If that's you, wherever you are, will you raise your hand to the Lord? Yes, the Lord sees your hand. Are there others? Just raise your hand to the Lord and you say, Lord, I need a fresh anointing. I need a fresh touch from you. Are there others? Raise your hand to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord sees your hand. The second group I want to pray for is you are about or seeking a new direction from the Lord. At this point, you are not so sure. You need a greater clarity on the step that you are taking. And maybe there's that fear in your heart, wondering if it's the right step for you or not. I want to pray for you. If there's the Lord's direction for you, that God will grant you courage. God grant you the bonus to step out in faith and just to trust and believe in God that this is direction for you and you have the conviction to know the Lord is with you and the Lord will go before you. And the Lord will enable you with His anointing. If that's you, I also want to pray for you. If you are the one, will you also raise your hand to the Lord wherever you are? Under such situation, you are about to embark on something you are not sure. There's a degree of fear in you. I want to pray for you that God will just you know, empower you as you begin to look to the Lord. If that's you, just raise your hand wherever you are. Is there someone here in such a situation? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And finally, the, the group of people I want to pray for is that, that you, you just say, Lord, I desire your, a fresh anointing from you upon my life, that wherever I am, that I will experience your empowerment, that wherever I am, the Lord, I will experience your presence in a greater measure. That I want to have a greater touch of your anointing upon your upon my life. If that's you, I want to pray for you also. Will you raise your hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord sees your hand. Yes, the Lord sees your hand. Yes, the Lord sees your hand. Are there others? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, O oh God. Let's just stand together right now. As the worship leader leads us in a song, let's take this time to draw close to the Lord. And what I want to do this morning is then, I'd like to invite those of you to raise your hand to just come to the front. I want the privilege to just pray for you, to lay hands on you, that you experience the anointing in a greater measure upon your life in a very personal and very powerful way. My wife and I will be here to pray with you and for you. So as you sing this song, you know, those who raise your hand, just come. And even those who didn't raise your hand, you come also as you, re as you see the touch of the Lord upon your life. Hallelujah. Praise you, O God.